Well, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is John Carlson. I'm the Director of Professional Development here at ACCE. And uh, we're glad that you're here joining us on today's webinar on the CCE Certification Program. And with me have uh, Raymond Burns and Ben Haskew. Raymond Burns is the Chair of the CCE Commission. And Ben Haskew is our Vice Chair. Uh, Raymond is the uh, President and CEO of the Roger Lowell Area uh, Chamber of Commerce in, in Arkansas. And Ben is the President and CEO of the Greater Greenville, South Carolina Chamber. So today, uh, well, first of all, just a couple things. Uh, we're just super excited as we look forward here to two uh, 2014 because uh, we had a terrific group in 2013. And uh, just pleased that all of you have expressed your interest and are looking to pursue this for yourselves. Um, so today's, uh, let's see, get the slides going. So today, um, kind of the nitty gritty, we'll cover the who, what, uh, why, when, and how. But the main purpose is really to answer your questions, dispel any mystery or concerns that you have, uh, and, and ultimately walking away here today with a better sense of kind of what this program is, um, what to expect from cost, uh, time, um, how is the program laid out, and uh, resources needed, just so you have a, a clear uh, model for planning for how this will work for you because we are already have a lot on our plates and we're all um, already very busy. Um, so with that, um, yeah, we'll proceed and want to pass it over to Raymond to talk a little bit about um, our commission. Raymond. Oh, well, thank you, John, and welcome, everyone. You know, this is a very rewarding process, and it's one that if you do decide to do, you'll, you'll really enjoy it, I think, and you'll get a lot out of it. Uh, a part of this is being able to reach out to others for help, and while John Carlson may be uh, one of your main points of contact, I'd like to spend just a few minutes and introduce uh, the rest of the commission. You may know one of the commissioners, and you may want to reach out to them as well. Uh, in addition to myself and uh, Ben, who's on the call, who's our vice chair, John McMartin uh, is our past chairman. We have Dan Collintone and Kelly Hall, David Hauser, Will Pineau, Matthew Pavarnik, Melinda Rabe, Kathy Tilk, Mary Graham, Mary Ann Vigili, Bob Quick, Shane Moody, and Bob McCoy. Uh, in addition to the commission members, we had 21 candidates last year who's just been through the process. It's really fresh on their minds, and if you know any of these or want to reach out to any of these folks, uh, they can give you a real on-the-ground experience of what they went through during the past year. And every one of them just did a fantastic job. Uh, some of those folks, uh, see, do we have the slide, John? Yep, we're going through them right now. Okay. Uh, well, what, what, uh, what slide are you looking for, Raymond? Uh, looking for the class of 2013. There we go. Yep. Uh, Mita Bates, Candace Boothby, Deborah Bowie, Beth Bowman, uh, Jay Byers, Doris uh, Carson Williams. Allie Crane, uh, Jamie Gates, Randy Gordon, Chris Hardy, Rodonna Hassel, Jeffrey Hunt, T.J. Johnson, uh, Justin McLaughlin, Charlie Moore, Jennifer Schmiel, Bob Roylack, Rex Richards, Don Sharp Brackett, Alan Smith, and Carlotta Ungaro. Uh, all of these folks would be excellent uh, resources for you to reach out to uh, if you have any questions from someone who's just gone through the program. Ben? Yes, sir. So uh, welcome all, and uh, we're glad you're on the call. Um, I want to talk about who qualifies. Um, uh, first off, we're looking for chamber execs uh, who've had six years of senior level management uh, at a chamber. Um, obviously, this is, uh, you know, at a level where you're involved in, uh, you know, strategic and, and uh, deliverables of your chamber. Uh, we'll see more on the application uh, a bit later, but it requires a minimum of 175 points uh, to, to meet the application requirements so that you move on beyond, uh, beyond to the next uh, parts of the program. Uh, 
uh, that you've had a major role in development of the supporting documents uh, with the application. And those would include things like uh, strategic plans, um, uh, annual programs of work, uh, uh, you know, financial uh, management, so on and so forth. Um, and then uh, the chamber, and uh, you must provide three recent years of financial statements uh, for the chamber. And there's a differential here for chambers that have a half million dollar budget or, or above, that's an annual review by a certified financial firm uh, with an audit at least every other year. And then for smaller chambers, those under $500,000, then it's uh, an annual review by a certified financial firm and an audit then every three years. And of course, then the final requirement is to, to be currently employed uh, in the chamber profession. So let's talk about what is a CCE. Uh, a CCE designation, first of all, represents the highest achievement in the chamber management profession. Uh, you will demonstrate a mastery of the chamber profession's body of knowledge, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, it will show your commitment to the chamber profession and dedication to managerial excellence and it will demonstrate leadership within the community and also within the chamber profession. Let's talk just a minute about the body of knowledge because just about everything we do is based off of that. Uh, ACCE and experienced chamber professionals uh, have gotten together over the years to develop the body of knowledge. It's something that's used throughout the profession. I think the Institute program relies on it for some of their programming. It basically helps uh, set, set the benchmarks for our profession, and it's the foundation for all of our ACCE programming. Uh, it outlines basically our general job competencies, and it is updated. Uh, we don't mean by this that you need to be an expert in each and every field or even have direct responsibility in each area of the body of knowledge. Uh, but you should have a comprehensive understanding of all of the items listed within the body of knowledge. So whether you're CEO or staff, uh, we're not looking for an expert in just one area. Uh, we're looking for bandwidth throughout the total of the body of knowledge, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So why should, why should you earn your CCE? Uh, well, first of all, it'll test your own knowledge and skill level. Uh, it certainly elevates your professional uh, status and your personal status within the chamber community and your own community. Uh, you're going to be joining a peer group of those who are really committed to chamber excellence. And John, if I'm not mistaken, I think we said this last year, this award over 40 years has been earned 500 times in the history of the award, a little over 500 now. It is a very visible mark of excellence in the chamber profession and it will increase your credibility with your peers, your members, your board, and your community. It will help advance your career and, and raise the standards of the chamber profession. Um, I can tell you when I first started in this profession, uh, someone gave me some really good advice. They said, always remember, they get the plaque and you get the check, and don't ever forget that. So everything we do, we talk about we. The CCE is more something that is about I. It's about you personally. Uh, it allows you to be recognized as someone who's dedicated to your craft. I mean, I chose to earn my CCE, and it is earned, not awarded, because I wanted to be the best I could be for my chamber and my community. And oftentimes, we'll get questions, well, I know this will help me, but will this help my chamber? Uh, from my perspective, it will help your chamber, it will help your community, because you'll be able to put some of the best practices you'll learn to work for your organization. So while this is a personal designation, it can and it does help your chamber. Uh, I might also add, if any of you are accredited or are thinking about becoming accredited, uh, this will help you in that process as well, because some of the same documents you'll have to put together for the CCE are also some of the same documents the U.S. Chamber uses the accreditation program. Uh, ben? Uh, like accreditation for the professional. You, you, you out, this is about I, 
not necessarily about the organization, but there are many similarities. And uh, I just echo everything you said about the importance of doing this. And it really has become kind of an elite group because out of thousands of us that work in chamber uh, organizations across the country, as you said, only 500 uh, are currently in that uh, CCE uh, category. So uh, what's the right time to apply? When should you apply? Uh, obviously, uh, you know, at the bottom line is, is meeting the requirements. And, you know, as, as has been said already, John is a wonderful staff resource at ACCE. There are others of us on the commission and uh, recent uh, uh, designees or, that have been awarded their CCE. Uh, many people that you can talk to about the requirements, and you'll learn more of that as we go along. Uh, when you're ready in your career for this, I think, is another important thing to think about. Um, when you're ready for that next step. Um, and, and I think uh, there is a, there's a commitment here that you're going to spend about a year from the time that you, where you are now, to making the application and going through the formal process. So you've got to think about dedicating yourself for that, that year and those milestones along the way to get through the whole process. And, and then finally, the, one of the other uh, you know, keys is to be sure that you're at a point where your chambers uh, reach the three-year cycle of financial review and, and audit. Um, so the next slide, the CCE certification process and the purpose, and I think this has really already been touched on. It kind of ties back to that body of knowledge um, you know, and, and your mastery of the four core areas in the chamber pro profession, uh, that being management, planning and development, membership and communication, and operations. Um, we're going to talk more about the, the process, um, uh, and, but, but it really does include these five steps. I mentioned the application. Uh, then there are essays uh, that have to be prepared. There's an oral presentation that will be done uh, uh, among uh, a panel of uh, members of the CCE Commission, uh, along with interviews, and then uh, finally an exam uh, that's about a four-hour exam. And we'll talk more about each, each one of these steps as we go along. Okay, thank you. Uh, oh, go ahead. I guess, uh, do I have the next one? I'm sorry, Raymond. No, uh, I do. No, it goes to John. Okay, John, pass it to you. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. So the, the, let's take a look at some of the steps, uh, digging down a little bit uh, more on a granular level. And the first step is the application. And again, write down, if you haven't already confirmed, the, uh, the deadline for the application is Friday, December 6th. And uh, if you haven't started on that, uh, now is a great time. Uh, it does take some time because the application uh, does also include supporting documentation. Uh, as Ben and uh, Raymond had alluded to, there are about 15 documents that support everything from your financials, the strategy, scope of work, your um, organizational chart, your resume, um, policy handbook. Um, and so there's, there's quite a lot of detail to be put together into a binder. Again, you'll be creating five replic like you'll be creating five binders. Uh, so a binder, but five copies that you'll be need to be postmarked, uh, sent to me here at ACCE by Friday, December sixth. Um, and also something to begin thinking about are the references, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, so as I mentioned, the application is uh, it's, it's seven pages. Well, actually, it's longer now because the good news is. We've updated the application this year, and we have it available on our website. And I'll send it out to you, uh, everyone who's on the call and signed up for this webinar, along with the recording. It's a, uh, it's a uh, savable, fillable uh, PDF application. And it calculates the points for you, so it helps you along the way. Uh, my ACCE. One of the, those of you that have, uh, that, that have been involved with ACCE for some time, one of the things you have available to you is if you go to acce.org and you, uh, you log into, uh, up in the upper right hand corner of the website, you log in. And if you need your account information, just email me and I'll get that to you. But you can go and select update my info. 
Um, and that opens up down number two where it says selecting your membership and then number three, your ACCE activity. And what I'll do is we, tr we have tracked some of the, uh, like such as conventions, seminars, some of the webinars, but this is just one of the resources to help you as you're looking to pull together your points to meet your 175 uh, requirement. Uh, how you earn points, education. Uh, the cool thing is it's like education here, we're looking at, uh, uh, first I guess I'll talk about formal education. Uh, if you have, for example, like if you have an undergrad, if you have your associate's degree, you earn 10 points. But if you have a bachelor's degree, you earn 30. Uh, and then if you have a graduate degree, you have a, an additional 10. And one of the things I want to mention, obviously if you have your bachelor's degree, you don't get to count 10 additional points for the associate. So again, so if you have a bachelor's, that's 30. And let's say you have a master's, that's an additional 10, that's 40. And then you can earn points for two additional courses that you have taken, um, three points each, so earning a maximum of 46 points for formal education. Um, other areas of continuing education is uh, professional development, um, national conventions, regional training, state meetings, uh, a webinar institute. For each of these areas, you can earn points that help build uh, that, that recognize your own professional development. Uh, so it's not just limited to, to formal education. And what I recommend here is just to start filling it out, just start putting things down and not worrying so much about where the information goes. Just start capturing what's all the professional development you've been through. Um, have you gone through institute? Did you go through the four-year program? Did you go through the six-year program, et cetera? So again, uh, you have your education points for college degrees and your, and your continuing education points that you get for, for other, um, other things you've done. So how you earn points, so we mentioned professional contributions uh, or we've mentioned professional development. Other areas where you can earn points is through, let's say you've presented a, a workshop, a seminar. You've presented at a chamber-centric uh, program through your state, your region, or even on a national level, you can earn points for that. Authoring an article, like you've written something uh, for a publication that's uh, chamber, uh, chamber focused. Uh, one of the keys here is if your job requires you to, for example, to write, I don't know, a, um, a, an inter to write something for a newsletter each and every month, that does not count but where your subject matter expertise is shared through uh, a publication, uh, something again in a regional, national e-newsletter, e-publication, you certainly want to acknowledge that for yourself. And also you're earning points for leadership both as a board officer and as a board member in addition to being a task force committee leader. And so let's take a look at these. Leadership roles. So uh, in the first section, I'll ask you for board officer positions. So where you've been a vice chair, um, a chair, uh, maybe at some, some boards even have like a treasurer. So any of those board positions that you've held, and there's no time constraint here, meaning you could go back as far in your chamber career where you've held these board positions. And again, how I would start is I would just start writing down listing them out, and then we'll start kind of figuring out if, uh, if we've got them in the right places or not. So again, so the first area is board officer position. The next area is listing as board member. So these are non-officer positions. Uh, and this is for both national chamber related or even civic, something on a state, regional, local level. So giving credit, the whole idea is to give credit where credit is due. And the other piece with the CCE is we're not looking for a one-trick pony. So that's why we have constraints on how many points you can earn in each of the areas. So we're looking for that well-roundedness, not in, just in your development, but also how you have developed others through, in this case, uh, uh, through your board. Uh, let's see, supporting, so in the application, as I mentioned, there are, there's documents that you need to provide. So once, you, um, so once you have your application 
in a draft form and you think you've got a good majority of, of, of it completed, my recommendation is, is that you email it to me um, at j, j for John, j Carlson at acce.org. Send me your application, take a look at it, and again, same thing, just want to make sure, let's, uh, let's take a look at it now rather than at December 6th. Um, and then uh, if there are any tweaks that we need to make, just it allows us to, to do a look over before sooner than later. So again, I recommend once you have a draft of your application put together, send it to me, and then I'll take a look at it and get right back to you with some feedback. So that's supporting documentation. Again, the financial statements for the most recent three years, your budgets, your long, long, your long-range strategic plan, um, your, your, your annual uh, business plan or your program of work, all the way down to your organizational charts, your policy manuals. And again, the idea here is to show a full representation of the organization that you're leading or you've helped to, to create and, and to build. And also references. Um, and the references, well, I'll come back to that in just a minute. So I mentioned the notebook. <clears throat> You'll be sending me five three-ring binder duplicate notebooks. Um, you'll be including your printed online application, um, and if you do, you know, be sure to check out your ACCE activity report as a resource for some of your points. And again, as I mentioned, start sooner than than later. Um, and then uh, in a bit, we'll open it up to get some questions. And so for right now, let's talk about the essay. Raymond, thanks, John. Well, the essay will go back to the body of knowledge. Uh, one of the first things you'll do after your notebooks and applications are accepted is you'll write two essays. Uh, the first essay will be uh, on a topic chosen from the body of knowledge. Uh, that will have to be approved in advance uh, by the commission, and you'll go through John to get that approval. And we'll ask for a two-page essay, and that will be evaluated by the commission and communication staff. Uh, to make sure that it follows the body of knowledge. And then the second one we'll ask you to write is just a one-page essay outlining your fiscal procedures to protect your board's fiduciary responsibilities. Uh, then following the acceptance of that, uh, you'll go to a location to be determined. Uh, we think it'll be New Orleans at this point. We're not for sure. Uh, and you'll come into a room to give a formal oral presentation and basically defend uh, your essay, uh, your long two-page essay. Uh, you'll be given 10 minutes, and you'll give a formal presentation just like you might to your board or to a prospect or some other formal group. Uh, it'll be on your primary essay topic, and you may use PowerPoint and handouts. Uh, not everyone does, but we do recommend that if you don't use PowerPoint or handout that you have something to uh, keep you on time and keep you on topic because we do limit these strictly to just 10 minutes. Um, after you've done the oral presentation, uh, and again, you'll be in a room with uh, up to three uh, CCE commissioners, uh, they will have gone through your notebook, and that's why this notebook is so important. We sit down and spend several hours looking at your notebook, uh, going through all of the documents that are in there. So it's important that you have a good working knowledge of everything that's in there. And you'll sit down for an interview. It's much like a job interview. And it will ask you to highlight your role as a leader in the chamber profession. Uh, we'll review those materials, as I said, in the notebook and uh, try to assess your commitment to the chamber profession and remember that you know, this is a stopping point if you don't uh, either pass the uh, interview or the oral presentation then uh, in order to continue you'll, you'll, you'll have to get past this phase and we can talk about what happens if you don't uh, not everybody does you just go back and pick up from the point uh, where you left on where you left off excuse me Ben so then that final um, point is the exam um, it's a written exam, and for the first time this past class, uh, the candidates were able to take this online. Uh, John, I assume we're going to be able to do that again. Yes, sir. Uh, and again, it's uh, the basis of the exam is on the body of knowledge that we referred to a couple of times here. And you will also be given a, a list of 
uh, must read monographs, white papers, books uh, that will help you in reinforcing your knowledge uh, around the, this body of work and so forth, and it will help you uh, as you move through that exam. Uh, it's multiple choice and short answer, uh, and you will take the exam uh, at the location of a, of a chamber where there is a CCE. So a, another CCE will proctor your exam. Uh, I think I said earlier uh, it does take all of four hours to complete the exam. And uh, again, this is a must pass uh, to move on then and receive the designation. So, um, before we get to questions, one of the things I want to tee up here is uh, I'm going to be asking both Raymond and Ben to share kind of some, uh, some I don't know, closing thoughts, but some general thoughts, uh, maybe some suggestions, some tips. But as, as they share that, um, if, if you have questions, there's two ways that you can submit your questions here. On your uh, dashboard, under attendee list, if you expand that, you'll see uh, uh, the individuals listed, or and there's a little icon where you can select the hand. So that's kind of a uh, a soft way or electronically to uh, raise your hand. And then what I'll do is I'll call on you, I'll unmute you, and uh, and then we can uh, you can present your question. Um, I'm afraid if I unmute everyone, we'll get a lot of feedback, and, and sometimes it's not it's uh, not always a good thing. The other opportunity, other way where you can question is in that same dashboard. There's a, a, a little tab uh, that you can expand where it says questions. Um, type that, submit it there, and I'll facilitate those for you. So those are the two ways. Again, you can either raise, raise your hand by selecting the hand icon or uh, typing in your question, and I'll facilitate that for you. So as you uh, share your questions, and of course afterward, you can always send your questions to me. Raymond and Ben, um, any one of us uh, to, to get back to you on. Um, so are you ready? Um, you know, one of the cool things that we've, or I guess you'd say I've worked to really refine in this process is I want you to know that uh, you're not going through this program alone. Um, I create a listserv and I do my, two. it's kind of a two-prong piece. I do my darndest to, to make you feel that you're part of a cohort where there's opportunities to collaborate and communicate um, with the, the, the CCE class that's going through the process. At the same time, I can work with you in connecting with a mentor. I think the mentor is, you know, you know, as I look at the list of people here, the, you know, most of you, um, I, can, I, I see, I know there's people that recommended you. There's people that have suggested that you need to do this. And I would highly suggest going back to them and kind of setting up some framework to connect with them throughout the year. Because sometimes, you know, you might get to your essay and you may have some questions. And, 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 uh, and please know that uh, I will work with you as much or as little as you want. Um, you know, I have some people I'm talking to every day. And some people it's maybe, you know, two times, three times over the course of, of, of the program. And the other thing that's pretty cool, I think, about this is the program has set up, I kind of like to, we, we take it one bite at a time. Because uh, I know that there's some you know, questions about how much the time commitment. Do I have time to do this? And as I think Ben and Raymond will tell you, I'm not sure if there's ever a good time. You know, if you want it, you want it. And then it's just a matter of making the decision, the choice to do it. But process-wise, we've set it up where we take one bite at a time and uh, we go one section at a time. And we'll have a conference call at the, before each of these steps. So once we have your applications and we've reviewed them and we've notified you on your, your pass-fail, we'll then have a conference call to talk about the, first, the, the next step in the process, and that's the essay. So you'll have an opportunity to ask your questions regarding the essay. Um, and we'll set up the process. You know, you'll submit your topics to me. You can send drafts to me for review or work with your mentor. And same thing for each of the steps when it comes to the interview. I'm there on site. I'm meeting with you. Um, you know, we'll make it in uh, the same time for each of the steps all the way up through the exam um, and, you know, to all the way to convention. So uh, you're not alone. So you've got your mentors, the commission, anyone that, that you, that, that you want to work with. 
Um, so again, just uh, wanted, wanted to share that. So um, Raymond, Ben, um, kind of hey, hey John, before wisdom. we uh, move on to our thoughts, uh, you were going to come back to references as a part of the process. Um, I don't think you did that yet. I, I did not. In 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 um, and uh, so in the app. Thank you, Ben. In the application, there are you're asked for six references. And um, off the top of my head here, I think it's like one of them is a a, a community leader, or for or one of them is a, a chamber president. Uh, uh, preferably a CCE. I think uh, two of them are community leaders, and then I think three of them are uh, people within the state, people who can uh, attest to your executive maturity, your character. So you're ultimate, altogether you're providing six references, and I, um, I call four of the six references. And again, what we're looking for is a character reference. Uh, you know, it's getting results is one thing, but how you get them is something else. So, um, so choose your references um, carefully, and this may go, you know, may sound like common sense, but be sure to connect with your references to let them know that you've you've put them down as a reference, so they know kind of what you're doing. And I, I tell you, there's nothing like reaching out to the references and just hearing the positive words and experiences, uh, positive experiences they've had in, in working with the uh, CCE candidates. So, so Raymond, uh, Ben, um, kind of words of wisdom. Well, John, I, I would say first of all that this is something that's going to require some time and you're going to have to take seriously, but at the same time, this is something that's going to be a learning experience, and you're really going to have a lot of fun, and you're going to make some really new best friends. It's kind of, in a way, it's kind of like going to institute. Uh, you never forget your first year institute class. You will never forget your CCE class. Uh, the way John has this set up, there's a lot of collaboration. If you want there to be, uh, there's an, and an enemy. If you don't want anybody to know you're taking this, then you don't have to be put on the list, and some people do prefer to do it that way. But this is something that will take some time, but it, it's very, very rewarding. It's a learning experience for you. It's a learning experience for the commission. Uh, and we're, we're so proud of the folks that go through this and do this. I just hope you all will, will take some time, consider this carefully, and, and move forward and go through this process. Uh, you will not be sorry that you did. Well said, Thank Raymond, and, and, and not much I can add to that other than to just reinforce what John uh, said. Uh, you're not an island in this process. Um, I think uh, all of us want to see uh, the applying class succeed, and there are many ways that we help along the way. And uh, you know, I'm reminded uh, in kind of a funny sort of way that one of our candidates last year um, I got a call from, and, and uh, she asked uh, for a 30-minute call, and she had a number of questions for me. And w when I got off the call, I said, gosh, that was really cool. I was so flattered that she took the time to call me. Well, this person called every member of the CCE commission with the same questions. <laughs> and she was really doing her homework and really, really asking good questions. So uh, we're here for you, and as Raymond said, uh, it's, it's a very rewarding uh, process and I think something that will add great value to your career. Okay. So we've got some questions coming in and so uh, let's take a look at those. So the first one, the first question is, does my chamber's year end was September 30th and we did not have an audit nor have we had one in the last three years. Does that eliminate the possibility for me to get the CCE? John, I, I think the short answer there is, is yes. Uh, either above or below the 500,000 mark, we're going to want to see at least one audit. Uh, if you're below the $500,000 mark, then we'll want to see at least an audit and two reviews done by an outside firm. Uh, if you're above that mark, then we'll probably see two audits and a review at a minimum or three audits. Uh, the commission takes the audit part of this very seriously. It was uh, modeled somewhat after the U.S. Chamber's accreditation program, 
and in order to participate in the program, uh, you do have to have uh, audited financials. If you do not, then you'll need to wait to apply for this until your chamber does have the requirements met under the uh, auditing guidelines. Okay. Next question that's come in is, in my 16 years in the chamber industry, we have been six successful on many fronts. However, in 2012, we suffered fallout from a series of unfortunate events in our community and had our first ever financial loss with a depletion of our reserves. I was able to bring us back to a positive position this year, but we are still rebuilding from ground zero. Would this ultimately mean I wouldn't qualify to do this at this time? Uh, it negates years of success, so I'm not sure uh, this is the time to apply. Ben, you want to take that one? Well, you know, I'd say we've all been through that, and uh, I don't think that's unique to most chambers. Uh, you know, the recession just wasn't kind. Uh, it sounds to me, based on what was said as a part of the question, that there's been uh, some real progress since that low point. Uh, I wouldn't be deterred if it were me in making an application and going through the process. Uh, Raymond, what do you think? Ben, I, I think there's an opportunity to learn here, and I think one of the questions that this person might be asked is, what did you learn from this experience, and, and how have you built a stronger organization? Uh, it, actually, it actually could work in their favor. So uh, while we don't encourage people to go through that and hope none of us ever have to, it, like you said, it does happen. And uh, it's just another one of those building blocks that will help you help you become a stronger CCE if you're successful going through the process. I don't think it would deter at all. Okay. So thank you for that, guys. Next question says, if you didn't do institute, is it possible to have enough points in the application? And uh, the, the answer is that is yes. Uh, you know, it's uh, again the CCE application is set up to grant points on a multitude of areas of, of your own excellence. Again, both in areas of your own professional development, so you're not limited to just institute, uh, but other areas of professional development, like such as ACCE has hosted events, such as the, um, the Ford Foundation Program. Uh, there we did the Aspen Institute, CCL, or, or other professional development programs that you have been through. Um, you know, the idea is just get it down um, you know, to, to recognize those, that programming that has supported you in your own professional development as a chamber executive. And there are other areas in governance where you've contributed on a board level, on a board officer level, task force chair level, and others. So it's really, really well-rounded uh, in that. So, um, I mean, I won't say all the time, uh, but it's not uncommon that we have CCEs that have not been through institute. Uh, but it's always nice to see more and more of them actually do having that experience. So absolutely, you can, you can earn enough points if you've been actively involved. And I think that's one of the keys, and I'll say this, is sometimes I'll see executives that have been uh, involved in their community for a long time, but they've never gotten out to do anything beyond, you know, they haven't uh, written an article, they haven't taught anything. So really, anyone who's been active and who's given on some different fronts, I think you'll be able to pull together the points, and I'll work with you on that. You know, I would say, like, give me a chance to kind of dig, you know, dig deep here a little bit and kind of go through your history of everything of, of, of programs and things you've been involved with. Because it's uh, the natural tendency is we don't give ourselves the full credit, and sometimes it's just easy to forget stuff we did in 1998. So um, good question. Uh, Let's see, next question is, it says, I just moved from one chamber to another six months ago and currently in this process of updating and creating some of the supporting documents for my current chamber. Uh, can I use documents from my previous chamber if needed? Uh, Raymond? John, we, we've seen this several times over the years that I've been on the commission, and the answer to that is yes. Uh, you certainly need to have those documents for your current chamber, and we realize that that sometimes is a process that takes a little bit of time, 
but certainly going back, uh, you can you can go back and use uh, documents from your previous chamber, uh, and we'll have conversations in the interview process about both your former chamber and your present chamber. Yeah. Ben, does that get us yeah, where we need to be? I, I, I think in our most recent class, we had at least one, if not a couple of those situations. Okay. Yep. Um, how do I sell the board on paying for the audit? Uh, they want to know what's in it for them rather than me personally. Um, so basically it says I would need to show them that the financial expense is for the benefit of the chamber as a whole, and we are under 500000 Well, you know, for me, uh, this has been, I, I, I think it's a matter of, of, of uh, protecting the board's uh, fiduciary responsibility. Um, that's one way I'd certainly sell it. I, I think it's uh, the kind of expense that is, um, uh, is, a, is, is healthy for the organization, it's healthy for the board, it's healthy for the staff. Um, and, and I know in a smaller organization it may be tough to, uh, to plan and, and for, that, for that kind of expense, but I, I think it's well worth it. Raymond, I don't know what you'd add. I, well, I, I totally agree with what you said, and the answer to the question will not be how will it benefit you personally. It will be how it benefits the chamber, because this is one of those things that uh, every chamber should do. Not every chamber does, but it's about protecting the board. It's about protecting the staff, and it's about having that outside auditor come in and, and make sure at a time in our country's history especially when transparency is a very key word, uh, chambers should be practicing what the business community uh, is practicing. And I, I think a good auditor could uh, make an easy sell to your board. And there are ways, by the way, to pay for these things. Uh, sometimes you can trade for services, sponsorships, or whatever. Uh, especially in smaller chambers, a lot of time auditors with nonprofit experience understand that. And, and they'll work with you uh, if you can find the right one. Thank you, guys. Can you briefly clarify the difference between serving on a board as chamber-related versus civic? Well, that's, um, you know, there's state associations, and that's certainly chamber-related, but it counts. There's serving, just like serving on the ACCE board or institute, uh, teaching at institute. Uh, you know, if you're serving on a, on a committee that's a requirement of your or board that's a requirement of your job, uh, we would have to look at the specific circumstance. Uh, for instance, if your chamber has a foundation and because of your role as CEO or key staff member, uh, you're placed as treasurer or even chairman, uh, that probably falls more in line with your job. But if you uh, serve on the board of the local Rotary Club or state association, economic development organization, uh, something that's not in your job description, I think, is the best way to describe that is really what we're looking for here. And here's a question. Uh, it says, my chamber conducts an annual audit by an accredited accounting firm. Does this meet the application requirements, as you noted, uh, both a financial review and an audit? Uh, I think an audit does it. An audit does it. If all you have is an audit, we're good. Okay. But three years of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, look and see what else here. Um, someone uh, requested that I send out the reading list, which I'll do. And again, following this, I'll uh, make available to everyone that signed up for today's webinar the recording. Um, I'll resend the application, my contact information, along with the commission and Ben and, and Raymond. Um, and the link to uh, the reading list. So I'm just going through here, see if there's any other questions. Um, so while I do this, uh, closing thoughts, guys? Ben, you can go first this time if you'd like. <laughs> well, you know, we're just thrilled to be a part of this uh, commission and helping uh, colleagues uh, move along in their uh, career development and the profession. It's a way we give back. Uh, and so we're we're thrilled with the interest level that we uh, we see in the group that's on the call and others that couldn't be on the call today. Uh, we're hoping for a, 
a really strong class, and I know I pledge, along with other members of the commission, uh, to er do everything we can to uh, to assist and uh, uh, make the process uh, really as smooth as practical as we move along. Ben, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. I'll, I'll go back to what I said before. This is very rewarding. Enjoy it. Have fun. Uh, take it seriously. And know that we're here to help you in any way that we can. Our, our role and our goal as a commission is to help you succeed. A couple more questions, guys. It says, I'm not the president of the chamber, but I have eight years of, uh, as director now and helped to create some new programs, processes, policies. I have my OM and, and want this. Uh, should I do this this year or should I wait until I am CEO? I think that depends on the points, but absolutely uh, we have staff members come through all the time. We have staff members represented on the commission. And uh, what we're looking for here is bandwidth. Uh, if you specialize in economic development, and all of the documentation and all of the answers to your questions were just solely about economic development, you probably won't do very good. But if you can demonstrate a broad range of knowledge throughout the organization that pertains to the documents that we've asked for, again, you don't have to be an expert in every field, but you do have to have a pretty broad and general knowledge of everything that's in the book. If you yeah. can do that, then this is the time to apply. Yeah, because I would say you have to, if, if you know, if, if you know your business, you know your business. And if, if, if you feel that you're grounded in it and uh, kind of been there, done that, you know, uh, from the, 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 the financials component, um, you know, strategizing from the internal and external landscapes, like that you've done it all. Um, you know, like what Raymond is saying, it's, um, you know, if I would just go back, if you feel grounded in your business, and uh, you can speak to it. Um, you can speak to it with honesty, with competence, with uh, understanding not just how it, it has affected you, but how your business has impacted the various components of your business in the different kind of functional areas. Then I think that's a good litmus test to saying that you have the experience and the expertise and are, are ready for this. Because again, what I want to set you up for to be successful is when you come in uh, and, and for your interview, um, you know, and you knock the ball out of the park for your presentation, that 10-minute bit of, you know, of a terrific example that exemplifies your leadership. And then you sit down for that 50-minute interview with three commissioners. Again, they're looking for, do you know your business? Can you speak to it eloquently? Do you know it inside and out? And again, I think that's just as a litmus test. It's just a contest of saying whether you're ready or not. Um, uh, another question that came in, it says, if we choose not to begin the process for this time around for the December 6th deadline, when is the next time we could consider uh, beginning the CCE process? Um, next year, um, we do this once a year, uh, and the, the, so the, the application for 2015 class, well, that sounds far ahead, 2015 class would be that, that Friday at the end of the first week of December. So you're, you're waiting a, a, another year. So next question says, I was the chair of the State Chambers Executive Association, but also head, a, uh, a head, a, uh, head of committees as well as a general board member. Does that count as duplicate service under Section 2? John, that's, that's one of those things we look at individually. Uh, if you're getting points for serving as chairman, you're probably not going to get points for being a board member in the same year, but you probably were a board member leading up to your chairmanship. Uh, as far as serving as chair of a separate committee, I think that's something we'd have to look at on an individual basis. What we're trying to avoid here is double dipping. Uh, Another probably another good point to bring up here is service in Rotary is an example that's often used. Uh, if you get a Paul Harris Fellowship, uh, usually that means you donated the money and you you basically are getting an award for giving to a foundation. However, if your club awards you honorarily a Paul Harris Fellow, uh, you didn't buy that award. That's something that would count as points. 
we use kind of the same method as we go through and look at these. And what we're looking for is probably not giving you points for the same job in the same year. I mean, you're, you're serving on the board. You're also chairman. You're not going to get points for both of those. But you will get more points for being chairman. So you take the most points there. Uh, I hope that answers the question. Okay. Yeah. Um, so no more questions at this point. Um, I just want to say it's it's uh, it's an outstanding program that I think again is set up on on a, on a healthy time like on a on a, on a, uh, a time pro like on a, a very doable process. Again, the program is broken up into chunks. Uh, kind of like the expression, how do you need an elephant? You know, that one bite at a time. Um, so if you want it, you're grounded in your business. I've seen either people are doing this to distinguish themselves because they're looking to help, you know, further enhance their credibility or even kind of uh, self-recognition in the work that you've done, but also recognizing the work that you've done for your community and your chamber, all the way up to those that, I mean, there's some people that just don't need it. And if you're one of those, um, what I think where you are contributing and why uh, what like why get the CCE is because two parts one you're saying you know thank you for everything that this work and this industry has given back to you and secondly we're in a, in a pivotal time of what I call I'm calling it's just the changing of the guard um, and what you're doing by getting your CCE is you're saying that this is important um, because some younger, uh, some of the, I would say the millennium, some of the values of, of younger executives, there isn't as high of a value around institutional programs such as the CCE. And I think it's a critical point right now to, to get all levels of experience with those grounded chamber executives getting their CCE so we can continue to carry the torch to say that this is beneficial to you and this is beneficial to your organization for the question around the, the audits. Because what we're all looking for is to elevate and to enhance the, the professionalism of our communities and our, our business and the way that you run your business. And again, that's why we, we check for the six of your references. Because there are people that get results, but they may not get them in the most ethical and the highest standards possible. So um, I work with you again, as I mentioned, as much or as little as you want. And uh, I set it up where there's a listserv, and we, we look to have a good time throughout it, taking it step by step. So any questions, anytime, feel free to reach out to me, call me, email me. Um, you want to set up a time to chat, happy to do that. As I mentioned, once you get a draft of your application together, send that to me. Um, and uh, thank you. It's a, it's a, it's a good thing. And, uh, and uh, so hats off all to you. And, and Ben and Raymond and the commission, um, you know, they do an outstanding job of, of just like what you're all trying to do in your communities to maintain and enhance the level of professionalism what this program is about. So it is earned. And I want to say it is earned. This past year, there were 21 CCEs. And every single one of those individuals earned each and every single step of the way through their applications, demonstrating their scope of work, through their essays, through their interviews and their presentations, through the four-hour exam. So it is something that's earned. And I have yet to, to anyone, at least in the last two or three years that I've worked with, that has at least has come to me and, and has said, um, John, I wish I hadn't done this. I have yet to hear that. But what the cool thing is, it is, it is a very selfish process where you get to say, I did this. And you get to recognize and represent everyone that's contributed to your own development at the same time uh, reflecting on all the impact that you've had in your professional career. Um, so with that, uh, thank you. And uh, we'll be in touch. As I mentioned, I'll send out this webinar along with some resources. And uh, look forward to connecting with you soon. So thank you, Raymond. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, everybody. You're welcome. Glad to do it. Bye-bye, yeah. yeah. everyone.